Have you ever had an adventure? You know, some kind of unusual, exciting, maybe even slightly dangerous experience. Like finding some buried treasure in a secret spot, or taking a ride on an elephant or a camel, or maybe going up in a hot air balloon. Hello everyone, I'm Kathleen Pelly. I wonder what your examples of exciting adventures were. Right now, my most exciting adventure has been moving to Scotland from America. It took a long time to organise and a long time to travel and a long time to get our dogs, Fiona and Rowan, all ready for their adventure of flying in an aeroplane. And now, today's episode is for all of you an encore episode of one of our most popular adventure stories. It's called The Tale of the Nani Beast. And before we begin, a huge thanks to all of you who have been reading and reviewing our podcast and sharing it with others. Remember, if you want some colouring sheets for our episodes, you can download them at www.journeywithstory.com. Now, Let's take an encore journey with this encore episode of The Tale of the Lanani Beast. There was once a young man who fell madly in love with a beautiful young girl. Every single day he would march over to her house and beg her to marry him. Now, this young girl would not say yes and she would not say no. Instead, she would say things like, Oh, you know, I'm feeling so thirsty for coconut water. How I would love to have some coconut water right now. And at once, the young man would jump up and say, You want coconut water? I will fetch you coconut water right now. Then off he would run to the coconut grove, climb a tree, cut a coconut, bring it back, slice off the top and present it to her. Here you are, a coconut for you. The next day, the young man would arrive at her house again. Please, will you marry me? The young girl would not say yes and she would not say no. You know, I am feeling so hungry for some fresh fish. How I would love some fresh fish for my supper tonight. You want fresh fish? I'll fetch you fresh fish right now. Then that young man would race to the stream. He would spear some fish, rush back and lay them in front of her. Here you are. Fresh fish for your supper tonight. Anything at all that girl could think of to ask, that young man would provide. But still, no matter how much he pleaded, she would not agree to marry him. One day, he asked her, Isn't there anything I could bring that would persuade you to marry me? I would bring you anything, anything at all. The girl got a faraway look in her eyes. Well, now that you mention it, there is one thing... But I'm sure you could never bring it to me. The tale of a Lanani beast. I have heard they are so beautiful, so silky, so rare. (gasps) Imagine how famous I would be if I owned such a tale. The young man gulped. The Lanani beasts live deep in the forest. The Lanani beasts crunch up humans for their dinner. Yes, I know. But any man who brought me the tale of a Lanani beast would be so brave, I would have to marry him. Now the young man was inspired. Now he knew how to win this girl. All he had to do was get the tale of a Lanani beast. And she would be his at last. He would go at once, he decided. So that young man sharpened his knife and set off into the forest in search of the Lanani beasts. Now, the Lanani beasts lived in a grove deep, deep, deep into the forest. All day long they slept, but at dusk the Lanani beasts woke up and then they went a-hunting for bones to crunch, preferably human bones. Now, here is a secret about the Lananis that no one knows. The Lananis had learned that humans coveted their tails. So, to keep humans from sneaking up on them, the Lenani had developed a strange sleeping habit. 
While the Danani slept, they would keep opening and closing their eyes. But they would really actually be sound asleep all the while, even when their eyes were wide open. And that's not all. While they slept, they would mutter under their breaths. When their eyes were closed, they would mutter, I'm asleep. When their eyes were open, they would mutter, I'm awake. I'm asleep. I'm awake. I'm asleep. I'm awake. I'm asleep. I'm awake. But really, they were sleeping soundly all the time. When the young man reached the grove of the Lanani beast, he saw them lying in mounds all over the ground. They seemed at first glance to be asleep, but when he ventured closer, he saw they were opening their eyes every few minutes and muttering, I'm asleep, I'm awake, I'm asleep, I'm awake, I'm asleep, I'm awake. They only sleep for a few seconds at a time, the young man thought. Hmm, how can I sneak in and cut off a Lanani tail? He sat down to watch them for a while. He watched them for a long while. And he noticed. When the Lenani opened their eyes, they never looked around. He noticed that when the Lenani said, I'm awake, they kept right on breathing deeply as if in sleep. I think these Lenani are really sleeping the whole time, he thought. I don't believe they wake up when they open their eyes. He had to have that tail. So he took the wrist and slowly, slowly, slowly he tip 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 toes over to the sleeping Lanani. He stepped over the first Lanani. I'm asleep, I'm awake, I'm asleep, I'm awake, I'm asleep, I'm awake. The Lanani did not move. Aha, thought the young man, I was right. They are all sound asleep. Now the young man tip toes through the sleeping Lanani looking for the most beautiful tail. There, he spotted it, the tail of the chief Lanani. Long, sleek, silky. That was the tale for his true love. The young man pulled out his knife, and that knife was so sharp, so sharp, with one quick swish. He cut that tail right off. It was so quick, and the Nanani was sleeping so deeply that it didn't even wake up. I'm asleep, I'm awake, I'm asleep, I'm awake, I'm asleep. Ouch! I'm awake, I'm asleep, I'm awake. The young man tiptoed out of the pile of sleeping beasts. He began to run back through the forest with the tail. Now she will marry me, he said. Tonight she will be mine. But he still had a long way to travel to reach his village. Night began to fall. Back at the grove, the Lenani began to wake up. <sighs> wake up, Lenani, wake up. Time to go out and crunch some bones. The Lenani began to stretch and get up. The Lenani beast laying next to the chief sat up and he put his hand on the ground and he felt something wet and sticky. It was blood from the chief's tail, but what is this? He began to laugh. The chief has wet his bed. The chief has wet his bed. The chief sat up and scowled. What? He put his hands down on the ground. What? It is blood, my tail. Someone has cut off my tail. Only a human would do such a thing like this. Whoever this man is, today he becomes my enemy. The Lenani began to snuffle around the grove and soon they discovered a trail of blood leading into the forest. I go to fetch my tail and our supper, said the chief. He picked up a handful of straw grass and tied it into a magic knot. Holding the knot in front of him, he began to chant, You who became my enemy today, you who became my enemy today, no matter where you go, no matter where you hide, I will find you. Speak to me. And the magic knot of grass drew that young man's voice running down the forest path. And the young man felt himself suddenly answering. I, 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 his voice burst out. He could not stop it. I who became your enemy today, I who became your enemy today, I cut your tail. The magic knot made him say that. The young man began to call out. I didn't mean to do it. I didn't mean to do it. The woman, the woman, the woman made me do it. Lanani stomped down the path after that young man, and the young man ran, ran, ran. Every little while, the Lanani would stop and call again. You who became my enemy today, you who became my enemy today, no matter where you go, no matter where you hide, I will find you. Speak to me. And the young man would be forced to stop and call back. I who became your enemy today, I who became your enemy today, I cut your tail, oh, but I didn't want to do it, I didn't want to do it. The woman, the woman, the woman made me do it. The young man reached his village and he ran to that girl's house. Here, here is your Lanani tail, now will you marry me? She was impressed. 
The tail of a Lanani. How brave you must be. Of course I will marry you. Then hide me. The Lanani is coming. The young girl covered him with her mats. He was completely out of sight. The Lanani entered the village. He looked around at all the houses. He is hiding in one of these huts, he said. He who became my enemy today. He who became my enemy today. No matter where you go, no matter where you hide, I will find you. Speak to me. Under the mats, the young man felt his voice coming out of him. I who became your enemy today. I who became your enemy today. I cut your tail. Oh, no, I didn't mean to do it. I didn't mean to do it. The woman, the woman, the woman made me do it. The Lanani followed the sound of that voice. He pushed into that house and there sat the girl holding his tail. He didn't see the young man anywhere. You who became my enemy today, you who became my enemy today, no matter where you go, no matter where you hide, I will find you. Speak to me. Under the mats, the young man hid both hands over his mouth, but it was no use. Still, his voice came out. I will declare your enemy today. I will declare your enemy today. I'll cut your tail like... He leapt to his feet and he begged the Lanani. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. The woman, the woman, the woman made me do it. The Lanani stared at that girl. The woman? The woman? The woman made you do it? And he snatched his tail back from the girl and he turned to that young man. But the man, the man, the man is in charge of his own actions. He snatched that young man up and he threw him over his back and he marched out of that house, out of the village and into the forest. And that young man was never seen again. Now, in that village, they tell the young girls, if you love a young man, do not ask impossible things. Do not do that. And to the young men, they say, if you love a young woman, no matter what she says, no matter what she asks, remember that the man is responsible for his own actions. Don't forget to send us your drawings. You can send them to us on Instagram and tag us or you can email them to www.journeywithstory.com Cheerio then. Join me next time for Journey With Story. Music and post-production was by Colette Jonas.